Good morning all, my name is Lee and welcome to the channel. So today's project is a spring-loaded tap follower. Let's get into it. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about making things. Uh, I started quite a number of years ago. Uh, I decided just to start building guitars. No experience whatsoever and now I have my own design of electric guitar. Uh, I've now moved on to some metal work rather than just the, the woodwork side of things. Uh, I've got myself a lathe, I've got a milling machine coming soon, uh, and I'm just starting to get into uh, metal work you know, using more accuracy, things like that. So today's project, because I'm getting a milling machine soon and I've been missing this on my lathe, is a spring-loaded tap follower. Quite simply, when you're trying to put the tap into a piece of work and twist it, you want some pressure on the back of it. Now there's plenty of videos out there on how to make uh, spring-loaded tap followers, uh, but again, for this channel, because I'm basic and uh, a beginner, I just wanna take you through a very simple design that I think anything should be able to achieve with a small lathe in a home workshop. So let's take a closer look. So for this project, I really only need three materials. I've got a piece of half inch mild steel, 12.75 millimeters ish. Uh, I've also got a piece of stainless steel. These small stainless steel rods uh, can be picked up on eBay or Amazon really cheap. And uh, I've checked them. They're not ultra accurate, but some of them are very accurate. For example, this one is supposed to be eight millimeters um, diameter and it just so happens this one is exactly eight millimeters diameter, so this is a good one. And of course, they're already polished. Uh, and finally, just a, a spring, because after all, it is a spring-loaded tap follower. So the idea then is I'm going to create a barrel with the mild steel. Uh, I'm going to cut an eight millimeter hole in it for the piston to fit inside. Uh, but of course, at the end of the piston, I'm gonna take that down to six millimeters and make a, a six millimeter hole at the end. Uh, and then the idea is, is with a screw cap at the back and the spring in there, it will push the point through and the shoulder where the size changes of the point uh, will stop the stainless steel point from being pushed through the device. So the other thing then is just a screw cap at the back. Uh, what I haven't decided on yet, I can always cut it off later, but maybe at the very back, I might thin that down a bit just so I've got something to put in the Jacobs chuck. Uh, but I'm just worried that'll make the whole thing slightly less accurate if I do that. So I haven't decided. What I'll probably do is cut that in to start with on the lathe. Uh, but if I don't like it, uh, I'll just cut it off again. So, Pretty simple, three different pieces of material. Let's jump on the lathe and get started. So the first thing to do is just face this off to get it ready. So what I plan to do is I'm going to actually make the cap from this first. So obviously the barrel's got a screw cap on the end of it. So what I'll do is I'll drill into that 10.5 millimeters to make an M12 fine thread. So an M12 fine is M12 by 1.5 millimeter uh, thread. So 10.5 mil, let's drill into that. And what I'll do is I'll part this cap off, pull the material out and make the rest of the barrel later. That looks good. I've gone in about uh, 15 millimeters. I just need to tap that now with the uh, M12 uh, 1.5 tap. If only I had a spring-loaded tap follower to put into my chuck, this would be a lot easier, but this is fine. I can just use the end of the Jacobs chuck just to put some even pressure on there to get this started.
So that's a pretty good thread in there. That should be fine. What I'll do now is I'll part this off here and this will be the cap end and then we can start on the main uh, body of the barrel. I've left a bit more length than the depth of the hole uh, because I might thin this down and make us a, uh, a thinner point uh, for the back of the tap follower but I haven't decided yet. I can always machine that part in later if necessary but I just want to leave enough room in case I do want to put a, a small feature there and uh, to, to be able to put it in a Jacob's chuck a bit easier. So the next job is just to face this off and then I need to take this shaft down to 12 millimeters for the other side of the thread. Well actually you want to go undersized, so I'll take this down to 11.7 millimeters, uh, probably about 7 mil deep, uh, and then I can put the die on there to create the thread. So that's about 11.7 mil. Uh, what I actually did is I also went in very slightly and then back out with the uh, pointed cutting bit just to create a nice sharp shoulder on there um, so uh, it, it will screw on correctly. M12 by 1.5 die. Uh, what I'll do, because it's quite short, you'll go in uh, with the writing facing towards the piece of work and once I've gone in as far as I can, it's actually sharper on the other side, so uh, you would then flip the die over and go in again, and that will get the um, grooves right up to the shoulder. So the next step is probably the most critical. Uh, I need to drill an eight mil bore into this. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, start with a spot drill. Uh, I'll go in by seven with a 7.5 mil drill and then I'll ream out to eight mil because uh, I need to be quite accurate. So the cylinder is quite smooth uh, and it fits perfectly uh, with the other component. So let's do that now. Seven point five mil drill. I need to go in about five to six centimeters, which is <laughs> the full length of this drill. So I just need to take it easy. So let's do that now. Now I'll just ream to eight mil. This is one of those cheap Chinese reamers, so I'm not expecting it to be that accurate, but it's the best tool I have to do the job. Now to test, hopefully this is a pretty good fit. Oh, that is a really good fit. So those reamers, they probably won't last long, but at least they're pretty accurate because that is a nice tight fit. So that's going to work perfectly. So the last operation I wanted to do was a six mil drill just to make a hole at the end for when I part it off, uh, leaving a six mil hole for the point to come through. However, my six mil drill is not long enough to go all the way through. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take this out the vise um, sorry, take this out of the jaws to flip it round to do the six mil hole after I've parted it off. Just check the depth of the hole and then I can make a mark for where I need to part it off.
So I'll flip the part round, I'll just face it off to tidy it up, and then I'll put a six mil hole through it. So I really want to make the point a bit longer than this, but it's hanging out too far and unfortunately my centre's too big to try and get in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trust the DRO. Uh, I'm going to go 6mm, but then I'm going to pull it out and do a little bit further as well. And hopefully after I've polished it up, you won't be able to see the line. Uh, so let's do that now. the problem it's still a bit oversized I just need to readjust my DRO to get it correct so I was actually being a bit too precise for this one of course this one doesn't have to be accurate it's this 8mm barrel that's the most important because that's going to be keeping the tension inside the uh, tube here so I've undersized it now to 5.9 millimeters diameter and now it fits on nicely and it's still a very good fit and that will go through easily. Okay, so I've set the compound now to uh, 60 degrees. Uh, be a bit careful with these Chinese lays because the measurement, it actually says 30 degrees. But what that is, is that's 30 degrees off of 90 degrees, if that makes sense, because they've just put the label on slightly different. So this is set to 60 degrees. I'll use the compound and I'll just put the point on the end of this now. So this is the stainless steel rod complete now. So 60 degree point on the end, uh, eight mil barrel, six mil point. And then of course we can put it into here and we can do the final assembly. So. The only thing, uh, other thing I need is actually just a spring, uh, but I don't have a one long spring, so all I'm doing is just getting two identical springs and I just push them together at the ends, and that gives me the length I need, so that's all I'm doing with that. So let's take a close look and put this all together. So I hope you enjoyed this little project. Uh, it is definitely a beginner project. Um, th there's a lot more improvements I could make to this, but I'm pleased I've got one now because I've really needed one of these to try and make my taps a bit straighter. Um, so I'm really happy with how this has turned out. If you liked what you see, please hit the subscribe button and, and the thumbs up. Um, but for now, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.